Step 3. Setting up BIM Server Users and Roles In this step, you will learn more about the roles of team members in a teamwork environment. You will also find out how to control the access rights of different project members having different roles. You will also become familiar with the teamwork library categories and their characteristics. At the end of this step, we will set up the teamwork environment and get familiar with the most important features of the teamwork palette. Now that we have shared our project, let's familiarize ourselves with the possibilities and settings of the Graphisoft BIM server. Right-click the BIM server icon in the Windows taskbar or in the Macintosh menu bar and select the Open Graphisoft BIM Server Control Center from the context menu to open the Control Center dialog. Click the Server Manager button to manage users, projects, and roles in the shared project. The Server Manager dialog appears. You can see the name of the server in parentheses in the title bar. All the previously defined settings can be accessed and modified from here. On the left, you can see the names of the various pages of the interface. You can activate these pages by clicking their name in the list on the left panel of the dialog. The Projects area lists all the shared teamwork projects. Here you can edit the project settings as well as create new teamwork projects or delete and export a project to a different BIM server if necessary. You can see that our shared MS Building TW project is visible in the list. The global user list can be defined at the Users page of the BIM Server Manager dialog. Each user has a login name, email address, access role, and additional data. You can create any number of new users, modify their settings, or delete them. Currently, only the one user is listed that we created in the previous step. Notice that this user is displayed with a golden key icon. This means that this user is a BIM server administrator and can manage all projects, users, and roles. In the Roles page, you can manage the roles of the team members. There are some default roles. The four default roles are Architect, Draftsman, Lead Architect, and Viewer. For example, the Lead Architect can access and modify any part of the project. The Architect has many access rights, but has no project management type rights, such as deleting or modifying attributes, setting libraries, etc. The Draftsman has even less rights to make modifications in the project. The viewer has only viewing rights and cannot edit anything in the project. Here, the server administrator can duplicate, rename, edit, and delete any of the roles. The Libraries page displays the list of libraries that have been uploaded to the server. Currently, we have the library that has been loaded with the PLN plan file we shared. This area only lists BIM server libraries you need to use the Library Manager to upload additional libraries or remove them. At the Custom Properties page, you can edit user properties and project categories. A possible user property would be Location, for instance, which could be useful in large offices to filter team members by their location. Project categories can be used to filter projects in large offices based on custom criteria. On the Server Activities page, you can monitor the performance of the BIM server computer. Here you can see the history of the CPU and memory load, and you can see when activity is low and therefore a good time to perform server maintenance. The BIM server administrator can find out if the server computer is powerful enough for the number of projects shared on it. Based on this information, the BIM server manager can also schedule backup upgrade, or maintenance activities during periods when the least number of users will be affected. Switch to Projects on the left side of the BIM Server Manager dialog. 
and click the MS Building TW project in the list to select it. Click the Settings button to open the Project Settings dialog. Here you can edit some project specific settings. At the General panel, you can change the project category. and view the project log. At the Users and Roles panel, you can customize user rights and modify other users and role related settings. The Backups panel lets you create manual backups or set a schedule for the creation of automatic backups. Currently, all these panels reflect the settings we provided when we shared the project. We will discuss these options and settings in later chapters of this guide. Click Cancel to leave the Project Settings dialog. Let's now open the Roles page of the BIM Server Manager dialog. In this list you can see the four basic roles of Architect, Draftsman, Lead Architect, and Viewer. Select the Draftsman role and click the Settings button to display the Role Settings dialog. Now we will see all the characteristics of all four roles simultaneously, so we can easily compare them. The Access Right column lists all possible access rights arranged in logical categories. Use the checkboxes to grant access rights to the roles. When the checkbox is checked, it means that the selected access right is granted to that role. For example, in the Project Structure group, all the available access rights are granted to the lead architect because all these checkboxes are checked for the lead architect role. The role settings enables you to fine-tune the default teamwork roles. In later chapters, you will see that the team member access rights, or roles, can be overridden on the project level. This way you can grant or deny access rights to users just for that project. Click Cancel to leave this dialog. Now we will delete the Draftsman role and create a new role which will base on the Lead Architect role. Select only the Draftsman role from the list and click the Delete button to delete it. In the upcoming Confirmation dialog, click Delete again. The Draftsman role is now deleted. We will now recreate it with slightly different access rights using the Lead Architect role as the template. Click on the Lead Architect role in the list to select it. Click the Create button and select the Duplicate Selected option from the pop-up list at the bottom of the dialog. Within a couple of seconds a new role named Copy of Lead Architect is created. Select Copy of Lead Architect only from the list and click the Settings button. In the Role Name field, modify the name to Draftsman. As you can see, the Draftsman role now has all rights checked as it inherited them from the Lead Architect role. We will disable some of the project-wide rights for this role as we do not want team members having a Draftsman role to have access rights to perform certain actions in the project. In the Project Structure group, Uncheck the checkboxes for Story Create and Story Delete or Modify. With these changes, no user with a Draftsman role will be able to create new stories or modify the story structure of the project. We want only the lead architect to be able to perform such actions. Also, Uncheck some of the other checkboxes under the Draftsman role as it is displayed on the screen. Once you are done, click the OK button to accept these changes. A warning dialog appears. This informs you that you have made changes to the roles. 
These changes can be applied to all users immediately by forcing them to leave the project, or it can be applied the next time they join the project. This is not relevant for us at the moment since no users have joined the project yet. Click the Apply Changes at Next Join button to continue. This takes us back to the BIM Server Manager dialog. Let us now create another user since we will need at least two users to demonstrate the capabilities of the Teamwork solution. Select Users on the left side of the BIM Server Manager dialog, then click the Create button and select the Create New User option from the pop-up list to add more team members to the project. This opens the New User Settings dialog where you can edit user-specific information. Let's add a new team member to the project by filling out all the fields as displayed on the screen. Let's enter a username and password. In our case, the username and password will be the same. We will also enter a first name, last name, and an email address. In the Role field, we have to select a role from the list of available roles. We will select the Draftsman role. It is also possible to upload a photo for the team member. There are two additional checkboxes. These can be used to provide special rights for the team member. Server Administrator Right enables team members to fully manage the BIM server, including the management of projects, users, roles, libraries, and custom properties. Project Administrator Right enables team members to manage projects only and also customize the roles of users on the project level. Click the User button in the upper right corner of the dialog and notice that users may be enabled or disabled. Only enabled users can join and work on a shared teamwork project. By default, all newly created users are enabled. Click the Create button to add the new team member to the project. The user colors in the movie may differ from the colors you see in front of you. However, this won't cause any problems throughout the ITG. In addition, you can change these colors at any time by selecting a user from the list and setting his or her user color in the User Settings dialog. As you can see, we now have two active team members in this shared teamwork project. Notice the difference between their icons. The golden key icon means that the team member has BIM Server Administrator privileges. Click the Close button to leave this dialog. Close the Graphisoft BIM Server Control Center. Let us now take a look at the Library Manager. Select the Library Manager option from the File, Libraries and Objects, menu to open the Library Manager dialog. As we mentioned earlier, the project library can also be managed by a responsible team member in cases of teamwork projects. The Library Manager provides a quick and simple overview of the project library characteristics. The list displays the library categories. The first one is the Embedded Library. This provides the possibility to embed those library parts in the project which have been created solely for the specific project. These can be stairs, for instance. The other category is BIM Server Libraries. This lists the libraries loaded for the project from the BIM Server. Currently, only one library is loaded for this project. This library was loaded with the PLN file we opened at the beginning of this chapter. Later in Chapter 5, we will work with BIM server libraries and find out more about their behavior. The third category is linked libraries. This applies only to non-shared projects. Therefore, this category is not displayed 
in the currently open shared teamwork project. Click Cancel Now to leave the dialog. Let us now set up the ARCHICAD work environment for teamwork. Activate the Teamwork palette from the window, Palettes, menu. The Teamwork palette appears on the screen. This contains all commands and information necessary for working on shared projects. On the Mac, place the Teamwork palette on the left side of the floor plan window by dragging it at its title bar. Please resize and reposition the floor plan window if necessary. On Windows, simply dock the Teamwork palette on the left side of the floor plan viewpoint. It will dock automatically. Please note that you can also activate the Teamwork palette from the Teamwork menu of ARCHICAD. Let's have a closer look at the Teamwork palette. At the top, you can see the full name of the user who is logged in to the project. Note that this is not the username used at login. The Teamwork palette consists of three panels. You can click the title bar of any panel to expand or collapse that panel. The Workspace panel gives you access to all commands related to element reservation and release, send and receive commands, plus options to show the workspaces of the various users using different color schemes for better differentiation. The Users panel lists all users that are currently logged into the project. It shows each user's online or offline status, their name, and the color by which elements reserved by them are shown when the appropriate display options are applied in the Color Workspaces field of the palette. Currently, only one team member has joined the project, so only one name is listed here. We will get acquainted with these two panels in Chapter 3. The Messages panel gives access to instant messaging commands and also lists the messages that were sent to you by other users of the team. We will familiarize ourselves with its features in Chapter 4. Activate the Options, Work Environment, Dialog Boxes and Palettes menu command to display it on the corresponding page of the Work Environment dialog. Uncheck the Show User Photos in Lists checkbox at the bottom of the dialog page. If this checkbox is checked, the Teamwork palette will display the photos of the team members. If it is unchecked, it will show the online and offline status of the users. We don't want to have photos displayed in the Lists and Messages dialog for this training guide, so we will leave this checkbox unchecked. Click OK to accept this change and return to the floor plan. The Teamwork palette now shows the online and offline status of each team member.